Welcome to Doctors N. Today I'm gonna be your hostess, Lulia Hobby. Today we have with us Dr. Preeti Tendon, specialist in OBGYN. She's working at International Modern Hospital. She has special interest in laparoscopic surgery and she has done advanced training in France. Also, she has done advanced training in robotic surgery in USA. Dr. Preeti, when should a woman see a gynecologist? It's a lot of opportunity to meet the gynecologist. I think the best time should be in the teenage to begin with. The girl can visit with her mother without any hesitation and just become friends with the gynecologist. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the time when she's undergoing so much of changes. That's an ideal time to really understand what's going to happen in the near future. What are the changes that she's expecting? Well, a woman can meet any time, you know. She, uh, there's a lot of opportunity to meet before they plan a pregnancy, before a marriage, before attaining menopause. There's so many concerns and so many queries which need to be answered. What are the most common conditions seen among the patients? In my practice, I see a lot of patients with a wide variety of problems. And not that they visit a gynecologist only when they're in trouble. They can meet otherwise also for a routine counseling, for any screening tests, mm -hmm. for a premarital counseling, for a preconceptional counseling, which is all very essential. They need to understand a lot of things before they go ahead and plan mm -hmm. the life ahead. A teenager can come with problems with her periods. They can be irregular periods. Some experience a lot of pain and they don't understand why that's happening. Exactly. They need to be evaluated. Mm -hmm. And if they've come in time, we can treat them in time after we've you know, done some tests on them and yeah. investigated them in detail. Well, if there's some vaginal infection, some discharge, after marriage for contraception counseling, well, there's a lot of opportunity to meet the doctor. The most common conditions that the patients do visit a doctor are mostly it's the period problems, especially mm -hmm. in the young girls. And then there can be contraception issues. When they want to understand before their first sexual debut or before marriage, they need to understand contraception. Women come with vaginal infections as well, mm -hmm. urinary tract infections, some breast concerns. They may have been diagnosed with a benign disease, a fibroid, for example. So there's a wide variety of patients which come to the outpatient department. Dr. Preeti, we have heard a lot about cervical cancer. What tests or screening should a woman have and how frequently? Lydia, there are a lot of tests available for screening. And the American College recommends that the screening starts at the age of 21. Every woman should start screening at the age of 21 and it should be done every three years. Mm -hmm. The test is called the pap smear test. It's a very simple test done in the doctor's outpatient department. The doctor just collects a smear from the mouth of the uterus that's called the cervix after inserting an instrument into the vagina of the patient. It's, it may be a little uncomfortable but it's not a painful test at all. It's something very important to do. And then it's sent to the lab and the slides are read under the microscope. We get, a, get the result in a few days time. If the test is normal, then the patient is advised to come back to the clinic after three years for a test. But of course, she does have to undergo a pelvic exam every year. She can't miss that. That's very, very important. And what age she should start? She should start at 21, 21. as I already said. And after 30, there's a recommendation that we screen for HPV virus as well. Because if the pap smear and the HPV are both normal, then the patient does not need to undergo screening for the next five years. Mm -hmm. All she requires is a pelvic exam alone. Should a woman get the HPV vaccine and when she should get it? Well, that's something very nice that you've asked me. Thank you. HPV vaccine is available to prevent cervical cancer. Mm -hmm. It prevents, again, the high-risk strains. There are two kinds of vaccines that are available. One also has prevention against the warts, okay? The, uh, the viral warts, mm -hmm. as we say. The vac ideal time to get the vaccination is the teenage. That's when the immune response is the best. The three doses taken over a period of six months. But yes, can be recommended to women even up to 35 years of age. Doctor, could you please enlighten us what is fibroids and how does it present like? Fibroids are benign tumors which start to grow in the womb of the woman. Womb is the uterus. Mm -hmm. They start in the muscle layer under the influence of the hormones specifically the estrogen. A woman can present with a large fibroid and have no symptoms at all. She's asymptomatic totally and only gets diagnosed when she comes in for a routine checkup. Mm -hmm. And the routine checkup may happen if she is coming for a consult or she comes and walks in for a, pre pre a pregnancy checkup 
know, an antenatal checkup and her first pregnancy was it. She may have been asymptomatic, no symptoms at all, all along. Okay. So. But some of them present with severe pain in periods. That's dysmenorrhea. That's when they get diagnosed with it. Or she may even present with a large mass growing in her belly. You know, her belly is growing up larger, but it grows very slowly. They're mostly benign tumors and they grow very, very slowly over years and years. Mm. A woman can also present with infertility, not being able to conceive. And that's when she's evaluated and diagnosed with a fibroid in her womb. She may also present with a complaint of very heavy, painful periods. She may be anemic, undergoing a lot of blood loss in her cycles each time. That's when she seeks a consult and she's diagnosed with a fibroid. And can fibroids turn into cancer? Very rarely, yes. About 1% fibroids can turn into cancer. That's when a patient can present with a sudden increase in the size of the fibroid, which can be picked up on imaging, like ultrasound or MRI, or it can be a clinical examination that can you know, lead to suspicion of a malignancy, and that's when we evaluate. But very rarely, yes, they can turn malignant. What treatments are available for fibroids? There are a lot of treatment options available for fibroids. They can be a medical management to something which is minimal invasive, and to a surgical option. Mm -hmm. The treatment for fibroid is tailored to the patient's requirement, her age, her desire to preserve her fertility, and her complaints, you know, with what she's presented with, and at what age group the patient has presented. Mm -hmm. Now, if it's a young, patient, young girl whose desires to preserve fertility, wants to have babies, wants to plan her family in the future, then the treatment options offered to her are maybe a medical management, something minimal invasive, or a surgical option just to remove the fibroids, okay. okay? And if she is fit enough, and also depends on the size, the site of the fibroid, the location in the uterus, and her presentation. A woman who's not being able to get pregnant because of the fibroid, mm -hmm. the fibroid needs to come out, which needs to be removed. A person, if she's not medically fit to undergo a procedure, a surgical procedure, then there is a medical option to shrink the size of fibroid. But all these medications are just temporary. It's just to okay. buy time for a while. If given for a limited duration of time, you can't exceed the duration because, of course, the side effect of medication comes in after a long-term use. Mm -hmm. And uh, there is even a way to block the blood supply to the fibroid. When it, and it shrinks over a period of time. Once you stop the blood supply, you know, it stops getting the nutrition and it starts to shrink in size. It may not disappear completely. So that's what I said. It depends on the age of the patient, her presentation, her desire to preserve fertility, with what complaints has she presented with, and in how much hurry are we to treat her. So we tailor the treatment according to her choice. Mm -hmm. There's minimal invasive surgery, a keyhole surgery, that's the laparoscopy, that's what I specialize in. And what are the benefits of the laparoscopic? Uh, laparoscopic surgery is a keyhole surgery. It's something like a daycare where a patient comes in the morning, gets operated, can go back the same day or maybe a day later. Oh, okay. Yeah, they're just small, small nicks on the abdomen through which you go in and you operate. So it's much easier than much the easier. surgery. Much yeah. easier. It's less painful. Patient is back to work much faster less than time. an open surgery. There's hardly any blood loss in this. So it's a very, very safe surgery for patients. Mm -hmm. What if a woman, she became pregnant and she has fibroids? Does it interfere with, any, with the pregnancy? You cannot be very sure with that. It all depends on the size. Again, a fibroid can be as small as a centimeter to as large as, what, 10, 15 centimeters as well. So it depends on the situation. Exactly. If it's a large fibroid, it may interfere in her getting pregnant. Mm. But if she has gotten pregnant, the fibroid tends to grow under the influence of pregnancy hormones also. It can undergo a certain amount of changes where she can have symptoms of pain and fever, which is managed medically. Yes, depending on the location of the fibroid is growing inside and it's the pregnancy has implanted on the site of the fibroid it may increase the chances of women undergoing a miscarriage because of the fibroid. Okay. Doctor, does the uterus need to be removed as a treatment for fibroids? Well, Lulian, the uterus does not need to be removed as a treatment for fibroid. It's an option given to the lady. It all depends on what age she has come. If she's in a menopausal age, she's completed her family, not desiring to preserve her fertility, she can have the uterus removed. Okay. Because the fibroids alone can be removed. That mm -hmm. procedure is called myomectomy, where only the fibroids are removed and the uterus is preserved. Yeah. But there is a chance of recurrence of fibroids later on, 
and there are treatment options available for prevention. Do the fibers come back after removal and how we can prevent it from coming back? Well, once uh, when we only remove the fibroids, when we do the myomectomy alone, the fibroids can come back, but the chance is about 1 to 13 percent. Mm -hmm. At our center, we do a procedure called the bilateral uterine artery clipping. You know, that kind of blocks the blood supply to the fibroid and that does prevent recurrence to an extent. Dr. Preeti, how soon after surgery the woman can get pregnant? The patient can plan a pregnancy soon, about say about three months after her surgery. Three months. That's the time required for the scar to heal in the uterus mm -hmm. and to gain some strength. So that's the minimum time required and soon, I mean, three months after her surgery, she can plan her pregnancy. During her pregnancy, she has to be under constant care with her obstetrician. Okay. So her, you know, she needs to be looked after well. She needs to visit her doctor more often than required for a normal patient who's not had a surgery. That's because we do not want the uterus, the site of surgery is a weak scar. Mm. And if the scar is about to give way or something, the doctor can diagnose earlier and intervene much earlier. And how she can deliver after it? Her delivery has to be a planned one, mm -hmm. an elective caesarean section after 37 weeks of pregnancy. If required, the doctor may have to intervene earlier if she begins to have some pain or there's a suspicion that the scar has gone weak. But well, all precautions are taken at the time of surgery to have a good scar and use the appropriate suture materials so that the scar is not weak. Okay. Doctor, I've heard about the hysteroscopy treatment for fibroids and how is it different from the laparoscopy? Hysteroscopy is examining the uterus from inside. Laparoscopy, the uterus is seen from the outside. For laparoscopy, you put incisions in the belly of the patient and put a camera inside. Mm -hmm. Whereas in a hysteroscopic procedure, you put the camera from the vagina into the uterus directly. There is no cut on the patient's abdomen. Oh. There is no knife used at all. And yes, for fibroids which are growing inside the uterus, which are in the submucous location, as we already discussed that the fibroids can be in different locations in the uterus. And the presentation depends on the location of the fibroid. Mm -hmm. So that's how each one is treated differently. The ones that grow inside can be used, removed hysteroscopically. They don't need a knife or an incision. And it's just about a daycare procedure. Patient comes in the morning, can go home the same evening as well. And it's a very, very rewarding surgery for the patient and the doctor. Mm -hmm. So it also it depends on the situation where when we can use uh, hysteroscopy or laparoscopy. That's right. You're absolutely right. It all depends on the location of the patient because these patients will generally present with very, very heavy periods mm -hmm. when the fibroid is growing inside the cavity of the uterus. Yeah. And that's when we just need to kind of shave the fibroid off. Okay. Or if it's just hanging with the pedicle there, we kind of resect it from there and it's removed. Mm -hmm. And patient gets immediate relief after this procedure. And what is your last advice for our viewers? Well, just a small advice to the viewers, please make friends with a gynecologist, visit your doctor at least once a year for a routine checkup. Don't get scared of your doctor, she's just your friend, who's just a phone call away all the time. And uh, there'll be small tests advised to you, starting from an ultrasound, where you can pick up small diseases much earlier in time and treat them in time. You may require a pap smear, at least you will have a suggestion and opinion from the doctor and do it in time before it's too late. Thank you, Dr. Pretty, for sharing with us all of this useful information. Thank you for watching us. Good evening.